I've let the Undo down, aye. But more than that, I've let myself down. Might as well go back to mending kettles. Oh, don't do that. Show Grenault a crystal, which once belonged to one of Artbert's companions. What's that you've got there? Such striking beauty chimes with her heartache in laughter and the transience of life, like the turmoil of history made manifest. Aye, I can see the brilliance of the crystal's legacy. Ah, you never capture such a gleam, not if you labored for a hundred years. But bugger me if I don't want to try. Where's me tools? Gods damn me, I'm set to work before the feeling fades. Good for you. The Illuminated Land. Grenault is brimming with newfound inspiration. I can feel it, a vision forming in me mind. Step aside, lass, and let me itch in hands get to work. If I must. Figure my scion buddies will show up, what with the thumbnail and whatnot. And done! I've taken the wonders that Crystal showed me and channeled them into new shape, what befits the Ando spiritual character. Whoa! Well, ain't that something? Not a bad job if I do say so myself. And to think I was this close to hanging up me hammer after studying the Crafo dimensions. I've been across the length and breadth of Novrant and gobbled up every scrap of craft in wisdom on what I could find. But no matter which technique I tried, me work was just no comparison. I couldn't even figure out how they put them together them damn buildings together. A mystery for the ages. That's what drew me here in the first place. I built me workshop, got the forges burning, then lost me bleeding willed craft. Thank the gods for that crystal of yours. Or I might never have gotten it back. I won't pry into your business, but I reckon your little miracle there has been through the kind of journey they sing songs about. The echoes of the memory it holds just speaks directly to your heart. Aye, I, I can still feel I'm coursing through me. The inspiration's not fading away, it's swelling up, stronger and stronger. Give me the chance, and I reckon I can weave the, the Crystal Saga into another thing as well. But bugger me, I'd almost forgotten the Undo's commission. If you could drag that lamp over to Talsh out for me, I'll stay here and dream up new armaments for you to try. Okay, so he's gonna be leading the relic quest in here, it appears. Well then. You now have access to Grinald's Forge. Equipment rewards will become available for collection, based on the relic quest you have completed. How about that? So what you got? Journey's End Gear, Healer. Huh. Okay, so that's the usual artifact gear that we usually get. So I can just claim him? No strings attached? Cool. I recall it looked good too, so that's cool. Okay then. Wither Tistra. This thing. got anything for this. That too. So let's see what we're looking at here. Hmm. Fairly basic. Yet people tell me that it looked kind of like a wedding dress. I suppose it can, if you've got a petite character. But anywho. Oh, how about this? Hmm. Freaking flower, or lily, such as it is. Hmm. Not that great, but it'll do. Probably save that up while I can. So we were going back to the Undos, weren't we? So basically by finishing your roll quest and being in the right class, then this guy will give us access to the artifact gear. That's helpful. Now then. Tosh art. What is it you have there? 
This thing that was bigger than me that I somehow transported. The sacred lamp! Then the finless one has kept his promise! My people tell me of the many deeds you have performed in the name of aiding the cops, and now you come to me, bearing the light we almost have surrendered hope of ever seeing. Actually, one of the local quests actually has you save the Clutch Mother of the Ondo, which is apparently one of the most important person in their community. We can doubt your purity no longer. Your arrival was the will of the ancients. Yes, the time for fear has passed. We shall take the lamp and unveil its austere illumination upon the walls of the Forgotten. Gather there with your companions, and we shall speak once, uh, once our prayers have been offered. If we must. So, that would be the place? Huh. How about that? O oh, stewards of the Ondo, we offer up our light in answer. That crystal you showed the artisan. Mm hmm? Was it... Did it belong to one of my friends? That it did. Surprised you weren't around, ghosty. I thought you were, you were always watching. I tried to give you a measure of privacy. No one wants a spirit looking over their shoulder every moment of the day. Indeed, especially not when I'm in my unmentionables. So tell me, if you would, how did you come across that crystal? Well, is this one of those times where I'll tell a story without actually saying anything? It was Lamites then. Strange that I should learn such things now, after they're long gone. They were fine friends, every one of them. Wonder what happens if you do them all at this point. I didn't expect death to teach me so much. About them, about Seto, about you, about the hope that hides at the heart of this world. Um, Seto? What? Wasn't well, that the name of Red's father and whatnot? I've never been one for idle chit-chat, but if by some miracle I could see them all again, I doubt I'd ever stop talking. I'm grateful I got to bend your ear, at least. And just for that, I reckon I'll stick with you. To the very end. Aww. Apologies, we were a little late to the gathering. That's so. You're not creeped out at the fact that I'm talking to ghosts? succeeded in gaining their trust. The delay wasn't exactly welcome, but at least our many hands made light work. And they seemed especially impressed with your contribution. Our hero indeed. Yustola was telling us those structures may date back to the age of the Asians. What's your point, Alfino? An Asian homeland. Despite his many protestations, I never quite believed Emmett Selk was telling the truth. Nor I. But there is no denying the evidence before our eyes. Clearly this was once a great city. A home they would see restored, no matter how many tens of thousands of years it takes. It's a hollow dream when you think about it. Even if they manage to rejoin all the worlds, they'll never bring back the ones who were lost. But would I have done any different? Are you... How are you feeling? Meh. That ought to be annoying. What now? You have completed your devotions? Yes, you've summoned Cthulhu, right? Yes. 
to the honored ancients have we offered up our prayers and our gratitude. You too have our thanks. Might we trouble thee then to tell us more of the illuminated land of which thou didst lately speak? To the west of here lies a great trench. Some days ago, a light appeared in that endless darkness. Curious, we ventured closer and discovered in the depths an entire city. Mm. The buildings we spied were akin to our own everlasting abodes. Impossibly so. We understood at once the ancients had risen. There could be no doubt. Taken with terror, we retreated to the cups, and I decreed that none should enter the trench until such time as we received a sign. Hmm. His voice creeps me out. I feel like he could eat me at any moment. Might it still be possible to reach this city of the ancients? Hmm. With no water to drown you, a finless one could now travel there. Yes. I am convinced you are the sign for which we have been waiting. My people will show you the way. If we must. Shall we? Indeed we shall. The chieftain has bid me guide your steps to the illuminated land. Come, the way lies downwards. Follow the path of coral and rock and join your comrades below. Okay, so those tunnels down there, I've been there before. I hate that place. Oh ah, well. Annoying little things. Now what you got, little Reen? Hey! Stop that! No, don't heal her, Yage! Help me out, damn it! Poison, that's no good. Alrighty then. You have everything you need. If that artisan fellow is as skilled as they say, then you may wish to avail yourself of his services ere we press on. Damn it. Friggin' Nautilus. Or Nautilus. Now then, I was busy. No, not you. If Emmett Selk is in that trench, then we'll have to assume he's not swimming in salt water. I wouldn't want to suddenly find ourselves at the edge of Bismarck's bubble with nowhere to read. We're on our way at last. Hmm, it seems far darker down here, but I'll not start a, a, at a few shadows. We are moving as a group, yes? During the time I've spent helping the Undo, I've been introduced to quite a few of the local varieties of sea life. Although sea monsters is made up the, the more apt term, 
probably best to avoid them if we can. Eating the Undo was fascinating. They're just like us in some ways, but they're completely different in others. The way they think, the way they play. I'd love to come back here and learn more about their culture. Will the dome last that long, I wonder? Emmet Selk had made himself difficult to reach, yet every step we take brings us nearer to his stronghold. Let us not linger, lest the Exarch suffer for our late arrival. All are gathered, yes? Then I shall describe the path you must take. Enter the cavern beyond and follow the wall down, and down, and down. Once at the bottom, find a passage to the northwest, and continue west and west and west. The way is not simple. Keep your friends within shouting distance and do not strain to the deep. Just before the journey's end, you will find the Caliban Gap and the barrier we placed at its mouth. This obstacle will fade should you raise a hand toward it. We have made it so. A most succinct explanation. We thank you for your guidance. I didn't listen to any of that. Right. Deeper into the depths we go. Oh, the thing I'm wondering is, don't they have giant beasties in the bottom of the ocean? Like, you know, I know we're not playing Subnautica or whatever, but... Damn it. Could kill myself if I keep doing that. Whew. Better save than sorry, I suppose. Hmm, I'd wager these bursts of waters could carry you clear to the top again. Not that I'm eager to try it. Figured that out on my own. We've seen that in Stormblood, after all. Our guide bade us travel to the cavern floor and thence to the west. <sighs> Yet would seem these twisting tunnels defy such simple instruction. Rather than rely on direction alone, I suggest we scout with care and relay the path ahead to those who come behind. If we must. Down and down we go. What you got? The rocks drop off sharply here, but I should think this coral thick enough to serve as a bridge. Whole thing is creepy. Looks like bowels or something. It's even slimy and whatever. Oh, some of those uh, blue sea aminones. Hmm. Remains of a ship, no doubt. Actually, never been to that particular section. I wasn't the first one, but not this one. Ah, hard! You have a choice of two routes from here. You can either take the long way to the south along the rock, or skip along this coral branch as it is in, as done. I, for one, shall be following my sister's example. Ahem, <laughs> gulp. Well, I suppose I don't see any reason to look to go the other way. Not to mention there's an ether current. Or perhaps that is the long way. Who knows? You so slimy. There's Alpha now. Not to it. Elise has already gone on ahead. We should catch up to her. Kind of dragging this out. But I suppose this one was rather big. There you are. Come on, I think I found the tunnel we were looking for. 
tunnel, eh? Oh yeah, one of those uh, rainbow manta rays. Hunted one at some point. Stingray, eh? Back when I was younger, there were those Lego sets uh, based on, uh, shall we say, sea depth exploration. There were a couple of groups, one that I don't remember that were white and blue with, uh, of course, tools for exploration of the depths. There was one teamed on Shark, and there was another one, uh, one uh, teamed on Stingray or Manta Rays. I got that set, that was actually pretty cool. They had this little, uh, shall we say, green plastic thing. Really neat. Wish I still had them. Here, this must be the barrier the Undo spoke of. Well, that was rather more arduous than expected. I feel a sudden rush of gratitude for the smooth roads our ancestors cut through the wilderness. It was a treacherous path indeed. Now, I believe one of us needs but raise a hand to banish this next obstacle. Hard, I elect you to do the honors. If I must. And if it blows up in my face, it's your fault, Elfino. Gone, just like that. I suppose we should end in. Let's do that. Like as not, this tunnel will be just as perilous as the road we walked to get here. Let's all stay aware of our surroundings, shall we? Now then. Urchin fish. One of those bomb fishes. Not very welcoming, are they? Suppose we could go down, but not sure that this is the path we want. Oh. None seem to matter either way. Another one of those. Well, seems we'll get flight much quicker than I expected. Then again, I suppose cowering those back caverns would be annoying. What you got, Alfino? Watch your footings here. I wouldn't envy to climb back if you fell. I do not intend to. Now then, there appears to be a path over there. There are those fishy things. Have I seen these before? Not sure. Welp. What now? By the gods! Whoa! Midgard? Well, perhaps not. Those look more like a more modern city, such as it is. When the Ondo spoke of a city, I did not think they meant an actual city. We are seeing the same view. The remnants in the Ondo settlement were solid material structures. But these... Everything here pulses with ether. Tis an enchantment on a monumental scale. That doesn't sound good. I think I'm seeing where they're going with this. 
That's not gonna be good. One cannot blame the Ando for fleeing the spectacle of these brooding edifices. We, however, have not the luxury of fear. It's big, I'll grant you, but cluttered city streets are far more conductive to infiltration than wide open spaces. This will work to our advantage, trust me. You'd think all those tall, dark buildings would be frightening, but for some reason, they just make me feel sad. Emmet Cell holds the Exarch captive somewhere within that vast city, yet even if we must search every alleyway, we will find him. When the chieftain spoke of light shining from the abyss, this is not all of what I imagined. Why would Emmet Cell do this? And he has his reasons. Hard, did you know the style of art, the architecture? It is the same use for the remnants at the cops and the murals painted towers. Look closely, Emmet Selk has not simply reclaimed these ruins, he has layered the resemblance of an entire city upon them. Gods, the magnitude of his artifice is staggering, though it pains me to admit, we do not fully understand the feats of which the, an old world Asian is capable. So Evans I Materia, and a piety one, why not? We have found our destination, but how to descend to the city itself? The end of a world. Elise is stealing herself for the task ahead. It's intimidating, yes, but we have to start somewhere. Why don't we have a closer look to, to, to at that tower to the southeast? We might be able to reach it from the edge of the trench. If we must. Little piano music is a nice touch there. Very forlorn. These things that look like eyes though. Creepy. Having a problem there, dude? Well, no matter. Still expecting to see a giant uh, fishy beach somewhere over there. So what am I looking for exactly? Some sort of door, perhaps? Seems to be one up out front. City seems big, though. Even an eaterite conveniently placed at the bottom. Still clad in old... Uh, Alexander Gear next to us. Look at the size of those doors. Now I know how pixies must feel. Hard rain recognized. Welcome to the city of Amorat. Will you be riding the lift? What? Did the building just welcome you? Yep, yeah, it is not so passing strange. Did Emmet Selk not invite Hard to visit his abode? This plainly thy coming was expected. And where will this lift be taking us? The lift services every level of Ancora Heights, but is presently configured to convey passengers directly to the ground floor. Well, there you have it. In the absence of some few hundred yawns of rope, we have little choice but to accept the offer. With emphasis on the we, I'm not about to let you walk into that place alone. Alright. I look kinda derpy at the moment. I wish to ride the lift. As you wish, the lift will arrive shortly. Wee. Next stop, ground floor. Facilities include the Bureau of Administrator, the Bureau of the Architect, and the Capital.
So what is this, Washington? Hmm, fancy. I just can't believe how tall everything is. Seems peaceful enough, he said, tempting fate. Each of these towers seems a veritable city in itself. Even a Gigas would feel inadequate in such surroundings. If my eyes do not deceive, we stand in some manner of communal square. Just a moment, I thought I saw something. Fancy. It's only at this distance that you start to realize just how big the buildings truly are. What did that voice call the city? Amorot? Look, over there. What now? Is that a person? Oh no, my mistake. That's giant. It doesn't seem to have noticed us yet. Giant or no, a resident of this place may have much and more to tell us. I say we make the first move. Alfano, you can just... Ugh. Oh my! Pray excuse my boldness, but might I ask you a few questions? Oh, what adorable costumes! Are you children on an excursion? This district has much to teach you. How odd! That sounded like no language I've ever heard, and yet I understood every word. Just as he understood us. Ahem, and which district is this exactly? You must be lost, poor things. You stand in the poly polyleritae district, wherein lie the institutions most vital to the management of our star. Can you tell us where to find him at Selk? Ah, I see, you've come to marvel at the workings of the Convocation of the of Fourteen. Hmm, <laughs> hardly surprising, I suppose. The whole world holds its breath as the final days draw near, and our brightest minds race to implement their plans. Thus, you must understand that gaining an audience at this time will be next to impossible. You should hurry home now, before your families begin to worry. Do you need me to walk you back? No, thank you. We will be fine. Very well. Take care, little ones. That's weird. So, the Asians were giants or what? What was that all about? To my eyes, these people appear as arcane entities. I suspect him itself wove them from either, much as he reconstructed the rest of the city. The final days. Such words will well befit the oblivion described to us by our Asian foe. A catastrophe of unprecedented scale, which did set in motion the summoning of Zodiac and thence Heidelin herself. But that happened centuries and centuries ago, didn't it? That man spoke as if they were rushing to avert a disaster here and now. Unless, for these people, the distant past is the here and now. 
I believe thou hast the right of it, Master Alfino. This ethereal Amorot and its residents appear to be phantoms of a different age. Emmet Selk hath resurrected a memory, a moment in time from before the star was sundered. So we find ourselves in a long destroyed city inhabited by the long departed, an unusual situation to be sure, but at least we're about to parlay with these ancients. In fact, they seem downright eager to chat, I say we use this to our advantage, split up, strike up some conversations, and see if we can't learn the location of our quarry. And while we're at it, it wouldn't hurt to wheedle out a few more details regarding this convocation of 14 and their impending disaster. Very well. To mingling them, let's meet back here when our jaws start aching. That's one way to put it. Yeah. Hey there, ghosty. There's one here, but there's that building over there that would probably be useful to us. Behemoth coming through. Now then. Optimistic Amorot Amorotine. Hmm. It would seem the hall is host to a most precocious visitor this day. And what, pray tell, shall be subject of our discussion, young one? Ah, the convocation and our handling of the coming peril. It is only natural that you should have questions. Shall we begin with the members themselves? As all know, the fourteen are the wisest and most puissant among us. They are the stewards of order, responsible for decisions which keep the star turning season after season. Be it the Speaker, La Habrea, or the Emissary, Elidibus, each seat is occupied by an elected sage of surpassing intellect. Logriff, Mitron, Emmet Selk, their individual titles have, as a gesture of respect and a matter of tradition, become synonymous with their incumbents. Thus it is with great incredulity that I greet this recent rumor that a seat in the Convocation is soon to be left vacant. If proven true, it would be an unprecedented development and testament to the immense pressure under which our saviors are toiling. Toiling, I mean. In any event, I for one am confident they shall deliver our star unto salvation. Well then. Bunch of other ones, but uh, that's something for me to explore, if at all. Hello! Coming through. You can see what he said. Doesn't really matter now, does it? Here he is, Anxious Amorotine. Good gracious child, where is your family? You should not be alone at a time like this. Run along home, quickly now. Have you not heard? Though you are confined to the lands across the sea, a terrible phenomenon afflicts our star. They are calling it the final days. It is said it starts suddenly, a cacophonous skeeting from beneath the earth. The sound distorts all living things within earshot and wrests from us control of our creation magics. Once that happens, all is lost. Fear, pain, despair, every dread impulse is siphoned from our minds and given substance. An eternal fall of fire rain, an incessant spawning of nightmarish beasts. None can point to the source of the phenomenon. Tis as if the star itself has fallen ill. As if a force inimical to life now festers and spread. Tis only a matter of time until Amorot too resounds to that discordant squall. You should, st should stay with your loved ones, child. Stay with them. 
Strange. Hmm, we are starting to go a little over time. It's not a big deal, but should get done sooner or later. Bureau Attendant. Pragmatic Amorotin. An audience with him at Selk? I am afraid you have the wrong office, little one. And besides, he will be far too busy to field the questions of curious children. Surely you have been told of the looming catastrophe? Every resource available to the Convocation must be best spent upon ensuring our world survives. They have yet to make an official announcement, but it's said the 14 are moving forward with a plan of scarce credible proportions, one which promises to grant will to the very star itself. They will invoke our mightiest spells of creation to birth an entity of all-encompassing magnificence, and then they will rewrite the laws of existence. This is a huge undertaking, and it must be completed ere the corruption spreads this far, Thus, I must say to you again, do not hold out hope for an audience. Odd. Well, it appears we need to uh, double back and go speak with our little friends. Well, they are little. The whole place feels alien somehow. Modern cities have no business being uh, in fantasy games. But then again, I suppose that's what this, this series does. Not in kids. Well, that was an experience. I was never very fond of being treated like a child, but it didn't make asking questions less suspicious. Hard. If I was not certain before, then I am now. The people of this city believe they face the end of the world. I cannot imagine what purpose compelled them itself to recreate this ancient Amorot. And yet, I fancy I hear the, his words to us echoing throughout this ocean trench. He would have his story known. Odd. A greater purpose. Alfino is awaiting the return of your other companions. We can compare notes once the others return. Hopefully then our next move will become clear. Oh, quests even. Nice. It would seem our conversations were much alike. A looming disaster, creation magics running rampant, and this convocation's efforts to bring salvation out of chaos. I suppose there was talk of little else in the time when these events came to pass. Ah, oh, Rianger, if I may, what are your thoughts on the ancient's art of creation? A fascinating discipline indeed. All the mind can conceive may be rendered in reality. All that is required is a clear concept upon which to focus one's will. It is not dissimilar to the primal rites taught by the Asians, where in ritual ceremony breathed life into figments of myth and legend. I see, we arrived at the same conclusion then. And don't she look clever by saying that, huh? The people who lived in the age before the Sundering were blessed with vast reserves of mana. No matter how draining these creation magics must be, it seems they paid the cost with not more than a fraction of the ether which coursed through their own bodies. If we were to, 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 to attempt the same, such spells would soon deplete our energies, then seek to draw the balance from elsewhere, from a horde of crystals mayhap, or from the very land itself. Thus, when this art of creation was placed into our hands, it became, in effect, a means of this for destruction. An interesting manner. 
which no doubt bears further study. But despite all these revelations, I worry we are no closer to finding Emmet Selk. Has anyone learned aught which might lead us to his location? Not directly, mayhap, but from what we've heard, it seems the convocation of 14 is sequestered in the nearby capital building. Yeah, I could have told you that myself. When we went to see for ourselves, the attendants wouldn't let us through without a writ of permission. So we tried our luck at the Bureau of the Administrator, where we thought these permissions might be issued, but the clerk there said he couldn't help us, since our names didn't appear in the registry. And that was where we gave up. I wonder, though, hard, could you be eligible for one of these writs? The voice in the lift seemed to know who you were. It might be that your name is registered at the Bureau as well. Where to look, I'd say. Meanwhile, I'll head back to the capital and search for a less official point of entry, just in case. Pray allow me to accompany thee on thy reconnaissance. An arcane perspective may prove needful. Or useful. Not sure I read that correctly. Ahem, I... I think I'd like to speak with more of these ancients. Maybe they know something that could help cure Hard's condition. Would you mind coming with me? Of course, I don't mind. Just lead the way. Wanted some girlfriends, did she? That's okay, run along. Then Ishtola and I will busy ourselves with further exploration. There is surely more intelligence to be had. And so we part ways once more. This time, however, let us reconvene in front of the capital. And so we go. Nice, they are identifying mostly the same buildings on which there were people to speak to. So that means I'll have the opportunity to look into this later. And with that uh, eat right over there, that should make things easier. Kind of reminds me when we were in Aziz Law, doing pointless busy work to get somewhere. Well, that's what a lot of those quests are. Pointless busy work. Impressive, if nothing else. Oh. Saw something, I was wondering what it was in chat. It was just an application for our free company. Alright, that is done. Let's go to the administrative clerk. Oh, menders and sellers too. Wonderful. I feel like I'm in a giant hotel in New York or something. Hey. A visitor's writ. Yes, I can assist you. Full name, please. Hard rain. Please wait at the near the counter while I confirm your details. Okay. Hard rain, your application is ready for collection. Alrighty then. As your residency was approved by Emmet Selg himself, further forms of identification will not be required. Here are your applications document. Summon them at the Bureau of the Secretaria, and the clerk will issue you with a visitor's writ for the capital. How nice of them. They'll send us to the freaking end of nowhere. Oh well, if we must. I mean, with the city so big, it means it takes a while to get anywhere. 
And they crafted it, they wanted people to look at it, but still. I kinda wonder what a full game of something like this might look like. I mean, a modern Final Fantasy design with city zones and whatnot. Although perhaps that's just uh, some appreciation from uh, old MMOs rubbing off there. Things like, you know, Champions Online, City of Heroes and whatnot. Those were cool. I haven't played Champions Online in a while. Played it too much, kinda lost interest. Even still have a lifetime subscription, which was a really bad idea. Seeing as it's been on life support for a while. Quite a few years, actually. Wonder what happened with the other games of that company. Stuff like, you know, Star Trek Online, Neverwinter. Pretty sure Neverwinter is still there. Not sure what they did beyond that. Mm. Friggin' slimes. What is that thing over there? Oh, that's where the capital is then. Hi! Next, please. Well, not like there's a lion or anything. Visiting the capital, are we? Please take a seat. Your name will be called once your application has been processed. Please take a seat. Right over there. That's when Chris Hansen showed up. A little tall, maybe. Although being a rogue garden, that's not nearly as much of an issue. Oh, they actually made us sit. How cute. Yeah, oh, damn it. May I? The heck? You, I think, are from a time beyond ours. Have you followed in the wake of Emmet Selk? What? Nay, there is no cause for alarm. I am simply a shade, here and not here. I know only that my name is Hitlodeus, and that this city is a recreation, a phantom moment plucked from the well of history. These others seem unaware of their pale existence, but I wonder if Emmet Selk's mind was distracted when it came to my reconstruction. A stray thought would have been enough. He told Elus will realize the truth, for example. We were close friends once, you see. Yet in spite of my perception, I play the same role as all the rest. A bit part, meant to, to bring color and noise to this well-crafted stage. Too much scrutiny, and we shall burst like the fragile bubbles we are. Thus I tell you again, my presence is not to concern you. I wish only to share your company whilst we wait. If you've come this far, then you know of the catastrophe which awaits us on our morrow. Kinda. The 
the final days. What began as isolated incidents soon swelled into a world-spanning threat. A convocation of 14, well, it was 13 at the time, endeavored to create a will for our star. They would repair the fundamental laws of order and halt the spread of destruction. But creation on such a scale required an immense source of power. Of those of us who still lived, nearly half offered up their lives in the name of salvation. And from their sacrifice, Zodiac was born. Just as we had hoped, he reached forth and altered the march of oblivion. Yet oh, how the star had suffered, so many species lost, the land was blighted, the waters poisoned, and even the wind had ceased to blow. Oh, similar to the story of the original Final Fantasy then. Once more did our people give of themselves to Zodiac, another half of our race sacrificed to cleanse the world, to ensure that trees and grasses and myriad tiny lives would sprout and grow and flourish. The cycle of life had begun anew, and we reconsidered the means by which we might protect it. Convocation decided thus. We would nurture our world until it was bursting with vitality. Then when the time was right, we would offer some portion of its living energy to Zodiac. In return, he would restore to us those brethren whose souls had fed his strength, and together we would resume our role as stewards. There were, however, those who disagreed with this plan. They argued that enough had been sacrificed to Zodiac, that this new world should belong to the lives newly born. These dissidents surrendered their life energies in the creation of Hydaelyn, an incarnation of their opposing belief, and for the first time in history, our people stood divided. Know you then how this conflict ended. Yeah, I kinda do. Hmm, I thought you might. Eh. Not really being stealthy, is he? Emmet Selk has ever been a champion for the will of Zodiac. The original plan may have been set back by millennia, but he will have not a but he will have not abandoned his cause. He will pay the price for our return by whatever means is necessary. And though he may carry himself with a certain glib ease, Emmet Selk is not a man to bear his burdens lightly. In fact, I imagine they have only grown heavier with every passing century. Explain the slump shoulders, I suppose. This truly a terrible weight he has chosen to carry.
Trying to make us feel badly about the bad guy, huh? Hard rain. It seems your turn has come. Pray do not let me keep you. Oh, even that does jump. Nice touch. Ah, there was one last thing. You walk with another at your side, yes? Ghosty? Nay, I see no definite form, just faintest suggestion of a second soul. I doubt it visible to anyone but me. Otherwise, I assume only you can see and hear this ethereal companion. Those moanings are starting to get annoying. <laughs> Your connection is hardly a coincidence. In our time, the two of you were one. The color of your souls tell the tame, the, the tale. Oh, really now? A hue that distinctive cannot be mistaken, no matter how thin the soul is spread. This is just the kind of fight I might expect for one such as she. Surely Emmet Selk has recognized the hint of her in you. Whatever does that mean? Hard rain? Okay, so let me take Gander here, based on what he said, and those things about the Council of Fourteen. Could it be that the war or Warrior of Light character, splintered as he is, might actually be the Fourteenth One from the... Uh, the Convocation of Fourteen. Something to think about. Fare you well, my new old friend. May you find what it is you seek. And he's gone. Well then, your visitor's writ, as requested. Where you, when you wish to gain admittance to the capital, simply present the document to the attendant within. That is done. Riding old Midgard Sommer here, who is apparently resting for a couple centuries. As is his wont, I suppose. I kinda wish we could go faster. This is excruciating. Not feeling very chatty at the moment, unfortunately. It's mostly me getting to point A to point B. You know the funny thing, though? They are explaining a lot of stuff, and this place kind of reminds me of another game. It's not quite as mind-blowing as it was, but there is a bit in the game called Chrono Cross in particular, which can uh, explain all of the big broad strokes of the plot, which I actually thought was actually fairly impressive. 
We'll see about it if I, we ever get to play it at some point. Can't say it was all that interesting to play, though. The story was amazing. To play uh, the gameplay? Not so much. Ah, hard. Ishtola and I have returned from an institution the locals call the Academia Anader. Well, from its public offices at least. We thought an Asian place of learning the ideal spot to research your condition, but it seems we lack the credentials to enter the Academia proper. The Academia will actually be a dungeon that we'll visit later. Ah good, you're here! Everyone seems to be present and accounted for. I'm not seeing- oh, there he is. Master Tancred can best describe our chances for infiltrating the capital. I only hope thy efforts to secure permissions were successful. That is where they were. Finally, you were gone for so long, I was on the verge of mounting a rescue party. How fared you in your bureaucratic ventures? Got the writ. Ah, I see my instincts were correct. And a good thing too, Uriage and I waited our chances of breaking into the capital, and an official entrance is by far the more attractive option. The capital boasted not a single armed sentry, but it would seem that in their time they did not deem it needful to pose guards. The windows and doors, however, appear heavily warded. Though mightily did we strive, with strength mundane and magical, we failed to budge them, even a fraction of one ilm. Mayhap was simply the case that Emmet Selk's recreation did not extend to their usual function. We didn't try everything, of course, but we thought it best to conserve our time and energy for more pressing matters. Speaking of which, Reen and I tried asking about a cure for you. The problem is, these ancients didn't exist beyond Amorots today. They will happily tell their own tale, but whenever we attempted to explain our situation, the conversation quickly became muddled. What of you, Harn? Was not worthy of interest said during your efforts to obtain a writ? I met this strange dude. Thinks I'm somebody else. A great sacrifice of life in exchange for their brethren's resurrection. And you say all the Asian scheming has been leading to this. All this time. But if they still mean to enact this plan, then things won't end with the rejoining. Aye, I thought we knew their intentions in full. Restore the world to its former glory, and in turn empower Zodiac to reclaim his throne as the will of the star. Yet that was merely a step along the way. I hesitate to put it into words, but we have to assume that following the final rejoining, the Essians mean to draw on the lives of the Source to make their sacrifice to Zodiac. That does seem the most likely scenario. Mayhap those who ally with the Essians could be spared that fate. But what value is there in surviving when all our history, all our struggles will be erased? I cannot con the conscience such an act. Of course not. And that's to say not of what Emmet Selk's plans for the Exarch's power. Do we stand by and let him threaten our future as well as our past? We need to find him hard, and when we do. Make your mark. Change the course of history in a way that's felt by those who came before, and those who came after, by, uh, by everyone you've ever met. Change things so that even my other self, dying somewhere in that future calamity, will smile and say, I knew you would win. That's an odd way to cheer someone up. Is fighting him itself the only way? He created an entire city. It will take everything we have to defeat him, if we even can. And if you push that hard in your current state, the light will break free. The decision to press on lies with you, just as it lies with each and every one of us. Haven't gone that far to give up. Well, let's go.
I need more piety, I don't know. Tenacity. What's that? I'll take more piety. Can never have enough, I say. That may be silly of me, but who knows? Tangred stares quietly into the distance. He seems calm and assured. His easy stance, born of confidence rather than false bravado. Reen appears to be brooding over her choices, her faintly trembling hands betraying her mounting trepidation. Rinage glances your way, his expression hesitant. You can see the struggle as he agonizes over the words he wishes to say. Ishtola meets your gaze with a strange smile. You seem to recall her wearing the self-same expression when speaking with Lys and Runar. Elfino is lost in thought, his eyes downcast. There is, however, no sign of the self-doubt which once assailed him at the falling snows. Shadowbringers. Elise appears to have made her decision. Do you remember that talk we had at the atop the tower in Mordsuk? I'm still of the same mind now as I was then. I don't abandon you, you don't abandon me, and together we make a difference in this fight. There's always hope if we look for it. I saw it again and again as you tore those veils of light from the sky. If we keep talking that next day, if we keep taking that next step forward, there's a chance we'll find a way to save you. So no matter how long it takes or how much it hurts, you can count on me to keep on walking. Eh. Vatri spoke of the disaster we would bring upon our heads, the ceaseless conflict. Imagine how he would sneer to see what's become of the first, not to mention your perilous predicament. And yet who can deny the fire your deeds have ignited in people's hearts? You achieved what my logic and ideals never could, uniting disparate peoples under the banner of hope and common purpose. Without you, that giant Talos would never have raised its head. I have borne witness to many such miracles at your side, and would do so again. This is but another obstacle in the road. So come, let us travel it. Drag me through wonder and danger, as you are wont to do, and I shall endeavor not to slow you down. Gonna speak with everybody, huh? As well thou knowest, if we are to usher Emmet Selk unto his rest, we must needs bind his Asian soul, and then shatter it with overwhelming force. The former task required to oris it, and such have I prepared, upon the exarch's asking, no less, though twas never mine intent to provide said boon. The future whence our noble friend Dot Hale is a world fallen to Asian artifice, and he would not see such grim history repeated. In a sense, Emmet Selk's destruction will be the culmination of the Exarch's efforts, a reward for all he hath endured these many years. Yet even as thou stridest into the jaws of peril, forget not but that his fondest wish, and that of many others besides, is to see thee survive unto the morrow. Tis in pursuit of that happiest of outcomes that I do pledge to remain at thy side. Ever so formal. Our time in the first has been a never-ending succession of trials, as arduous as our path in the source ever was. Yet through all our journeys together, through that deep and foreboding wood, you have helped me to stay true to my convictions. Thus would I return the favor, do as your heart decrees, without hesitation and regret, and that is all I will say on the matter. Well, this has put everyone in a solemn mood, hasn't it? Honestly, we're not even sure this will be the end of it. But I suppose we should speak our minds when we have the opportunity. You taught me that much in Amarang. So forgive me this moment of sentiment, Hard. By dragging me into this sorry mess, you've given me the chance to think and act as I should have. For Reen's sake. Words cannot express how much this has changed my life. Or how grateful I am for your support. So I shall express my gratitude through action instead. No matter where you decide to go, I will be there, guarding your back. Everybody's gonna die. <laughs> Uh, it's tough to be a teenager, isn't it? When Minfila entrusted me for with her powers, 
I wish she warned me that no matter how strong you you become, you can still fall victim to despair. You can still feel powerless. And she was right. After you collapsed on Mount Golg, my hands wouldn't shop, stop shaking. If I made a mistake, if I failed to bind the light within you, I was terrified you would die. Even now, you could be moments from turning, and I wouldn't know how to save you. You, Tancred, the others, you've all been there when I needed help. Minfila surrendered her life to me, her legacy. I should be ready to do the same for you, and I want to, I do, but I just... I'm not good enough. She told me to follow your example, and I've tried, I've really tried. Ah, <laughs> uh, That's okay, dear. Have a head, Pat. Then you shouldn't hang your head. I shouldn't? Hmm. <laughs> oh my, the feels. Fate can be cruel, but a smile better suits a hero. That's Orshafar right there. I'm not sure I... Aw. Oh. Brings a tear to my eye, it does. Actually, never mind. I think I'll understand better if I try it for myself. No, nothing will come of brooding here in self-pity. I've made my decision. Hard. I'm going with you. Off you go, little one. And off we go to the capital's attendant. Oh, must be having a smoke outside or something. Not a smoker myself, but I had a lot of colleagues who were. Welcome to the capital. All visitors must present an official writ of permission before admittance will be granted. Your documents appear to be in order. You may proceed into the capital, but any guests you may choose to bring with you must remain in your vicinity at all time. If we must. This really is unacceptable. I gave you very specific instructions. There he is. Emmet Selk. My invitation was for an abomination, ripe with the power to bring about the world's annihilation. Not this half-broken thing. Whatever am I to do with you? And I see you insist on keeping the same familiar company. Are you so lost without them? Yeah. It is not she who is lost without the familiar. Not content with remaking an entire city, you aim to fill it with the reconstituted souls of the dead. I may have gotten a little carried away in my attention to detail, added a few unnecessary flourishes. Well, there's no point trying to hide it. Yes. Once the rejoining of worlds is complete, Zodiac will regain his full strength and shatter his prison. Then we shall offer up the source's remaining inhabitants in sacrifice, that we might resurrect our brethren who died to bring Zodiac into existence. But what was it that you? came here to do exactly. 
That's a good question. Came here to stop you. Did you know? One last do or die attempt to foil my plans before your mind dissolves into madness? How very, very heroic of you. In every single age, there is always someone who wants to stand up to the evil Asians. Always the same arrogance. The same insistence that the world belongs to them, as if theirs were the only rightful claim, theirs the only existence worthy of preservation. I wonder what would have happened if you said you were here for the Even Exarch. Even now, after everything, you refuse to see reason. You think it unfair that you were subject to suffering? that your lives will be sacrificed for the ancients. Look at me. I have lived a thousand, thousand of your lives. I have broken bread with you, fought with you, grown ill, grown old, sired children, and yes, welcomed death's sweet embrace. For eons have I measured your worth and found you wanting. Too weak and feeble-minded to serve as stewards of any star! A bit insane, perhaps. Have your recent spats with Vorthri and his sin eaters taught you nothing? Have you not learned that your ignorance and frailty beget only endless misery? How long do you mean to perpetuate this farce? How much more must I endure your bumbling interference? Let us imagine that the laws of reality are again undone and the world faces true annihilation. Do you honestly believe that half your number would sacrifice themselves to save the other? Hmm. Of course they wouldn't! And if you had witnessed history unfold as I have, you would reach the same conclusion. You cannot be entrusted with our legacy. I will bring back our brethren, our friends, our loved ones. The world belongs to us and us alone. I admit, the slump back is a nice touch. Emmett Selk! Uh, what now, Alfinel? We understand, truly, but it makes no difference. The ones you love are in the past, while ours are here in the present. One day, we too will be ashes and dust, but not today. Our time is not yet finished. We share your conviction, and that is why we will not abandon our course. You think us the same? You think your tattered soul of equal worth to those I lost? Then come. Earn your place. Prove yourselves worthy to inherit this star. Oh, a contest of will, is it? <laughs> Oh. Behold 
the coming oblivion. It was the end of our era and the beginning of our great work. A fitting backdrop for your final judgment. So he's Satan then. <laughs> I shall wait within, but do not spend too much time on your preparations. There's no telling how much longer the guest of honor will last. <laughs> well played. Doing the old Sephiroth thing backward, but okay. Amorot now accessible. And this is it. So, I'm afraid that's gonna be it for the time being. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you like what you're seeing, maybe follow the stream. Maybe leave a comment if you're on YouTube. And that was the Great Pumpkin. Y'all have a pleasant time now. Bye-bye.